and you had no money for ammunition because it was so expensive, go ahead hit that subscribe button, like, comment, all those things help me out quite a bit. Thank you guys. Um, we are getting a lot of support from Gun Mag Warehouse right now. Uh, they actually are having me do some exclusive videos for them. Um, you might be like, oh no, they're taking Grantham away from us. No, they're not. Uh, I'm doing those videos and these videos at the same time. But uh, a lot of cool stuff going on there. Uh, so support them. Buy magazines from them. They're really cool. Discount code Grantham. Uh, if you're looking for t-shirts, belts, all that type of stuff, and that sick merch, Alonzo Defense Group, Teespring, um, discount code Grantham for Alonzo Defense Group. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm trying to spend less time kind of doing those intros. But let's talk about a really interesting subject today. So I don't know that I've actually done something like this um, in the channel so far. So I think this might be a first. I don't know. You guys actually probably know my videos better than me at this point. Uh, comment section is out of control. You guys, I love you guys. So today we're going to compare two rifles um, directly head-to-head -head against each other with drills. And it's kind of cool because I don't believe I've done this before. And I want to do more of this with products where I have... Um, you know, two products in the kind of the same kind of pool. They're kind of trying to do the same thing, and I want to compete them against each other in drills. So today we are going to compare a military M4 against a Gucci'd out civilian style AR-15. So we are going to take these head to head in a couple drills. We're going to see which ones are faster, which ones are better, and that type of thing. And then we're going to kind of uh, take all the information that we learned and that we know, and we're going to talk about these two rifles and about uh, the differences and why they're set up the way they're set up and, uh, you know, the pluses and minuses to both. So with all that being said, um, let's talk a little bit about the setup of each rifle here. Now, with the military M4, now first off, I know when I'm picking this up that people are going to A, start screaming that they were not issued uh, a setup uh, you know, like this, like I never was uh, issued a you know aimpoint comp M4S. That's ridiculous. I was issued a ACOG, and it's going to turn into a measuring contest. And a guy's going to be like, "Yeah, well, I was issued a M68," and then the dude's going to be like, "Oh, I was issued iron sights." But then nobody really cares. So Chessy Puller is going to rise out of the grave. And he's just going to strangle all of you because he's tired of us. So it doesn't matter too much. But um, this is kind of in the in the realm of a Block 1.5 setup. So let's talk about it really quickly. First off, the upper is military. It is a uh, M4 military. Everything's government spec, all that. There's uh, no tomfoolery there. The Right here, we have a PEC-15. On the side, we have an Insight Light. Um, we have a nice little CAC broom handle grip there on the bottom. Just an instant classic. We have our pressure pad for our light and for our PEC-15. Moving back from there, oh, CAC rail, of course. Moving back from there, we have a Aimpoint Comp M4S. Um, I know some of you were not issued these or did not use these, use these in the military, but they are widely used. You have a Scalar Works mount that is uh, kind of my my preference. Um, I understand the Scalar Works mounts aren't so much used yet. Moving back from there, we have an MA Tech rear sight. We have a Colt charging handle. We have a B5 system SOT mod stock. Um, all this is good. The sling is a way of the gun sling from Frank Proctor, who is a really cool dude. Highly recommend that you watch his stuff. Moving down to the lower. Lower is all mil spec parts. Um, it is an aero precision lower. Obviously, uh, the military is not using aero precision lowers. They are using um, FN or Colt. So that can be a problem for some people. The selector switch is, again, another kind of fashion faux pas here. It is a Radian Raptor. I do have it set to the 90 degree throw. That way, it's pretty close to. Uh, what you see with the mil spec, uh, only difference being that it's just really well made. Grip is, of course, uh, sanded down. I always sand down my grips on the, I hate the grip angle here, so I sand that down, that little nub right there for the finger, it always catches me. So that is this particular setup. <clears throat> Moving over to the Gucci uh, Civilian AR-15. Uh, so the upper is a Bravo Company MCMR with an enhanced lightweight barrel, um, the MCMR being the the rail system, which is M-Lock, the barrel is 14.5 inches with a pin and welded uh, muzzle device. <clears throat> the optic is an Aimpoint Comp M5S on Scalar Works mount. We have a Arasaka 600 series light connected to a cloud defensive mount to hold the pressure pad in place. High, big fan of cloud defensive. If you haven't used them before, uh, your pressure pads aren't going to go anywhere. Scalar Works front sight. We have a CAC rear sight. Moving down to the lower, we have a Radian Weapons ADAC lower. Uh, it has a Geisy trigger, uh, all Radian internals, all that type of stuff. We have a Magpul grip 
and then we have a Radiant Selector, of course, Raptor on the ADAC lower. Charging handle is a Radiant Raptor. Um, they absolutely rock, probably some of the best on the market. This one is NP3 coated, super slick. Finally, actually the same sock, a B5 SOP mod. So some things are just good. Uh, some of you might ask about the hand sop. The hand sop is a Zero Bravo hand sop. Um, I just started using these, I'm really digging them. So more on that later. Sling is a Ferro Concepts Slingster. So I understand that when it comes to the military M4, some of you be like, might be like, oh, it's nowhere close to what I was issued, so this test sucks. Fair enough. But the gas system, the upper is all military, and the lower is pretty freaking close, so deal with it. So let's do a direct comparison here. I did five drills. With these five drills, I first off started with both these rifles and I warmed up with them using the Bear Solutions drill, which sucks. If you haven't done it yet, highly recommend you watch the video on it and try it out. And after I warmed up, I did each drill. So I did three iterations of the drill with each rifle. So the drills run three times with each rifle. Um, there's a problem with that, obviously. Uh, the more I run the drill, the better I'm going to get at the drill. That's just the way it goes. So what I did was I'd start with one rifle, run three, and then go to the other rifle, run the three. And then the next drill, I would use the opposite rifle. That way, each rifle was kind of getting used first on a drill that way that we could kind of see, make sure that it wasn't just getting really proficient with the drill and then running to the next rifle and just crushing that drill. So there's going to be human error here. You know, we can't be perfect when it comes to these drills. Um, there's going to be familiarity with the rifle, familiarity with the drill, that type of stuff. Um, these numbers are kind of just to kind of see what I can do, um, given my level of training and that type of thing. But I think the number, numbers are still pretty interesting. Um, I wasn't really sure what to expect, um, you know, which one I'd be faster with. So without further ado, let's talk about the first drill that I did. So the first drill that I did is a classic from Viking Tactics. Um, Kyle Lamb came up with it. It is the 222 drill. So to simply two, uh, three targets. They are 10 yards uh, away from you. They're spaced approximately two yards apart. And then you put two rounds into each uh, target from a low ready on buzzer. So let's start off with the military M4. So I ran that drill. I did it in 1.68, uh, really good time. I next ran the drill with the Gucci AR. And I ran that drill in 1.39. So there is definitely a difference. I was definitely faster with the um, civilian AR. And of course, I ran the drill uh, with civilian AR last. So there's a possibility also that I was super warmed up, and that's why I did it so much faster. But in reality, the civilian AR was actually much easier to control. Uh, I had much better ergonomics, and the recoil impulse was much lighter on the civilian Gucci it out AR. So because of that, it was easier to keep my dot on target as I transitioned through. That allowed me to speed up my trigger control and trigger speed and that type of stuff and I was able to put the rounds in faster. So that was a 222 drill. The next drill that we did was a basic Mozambique. So Mozambique drill is simply two to the chest, one to the head. It's a very classic drill, uh, military application, maybe not so much, but still fun to do because um, it works your cadence as you're working from chest to head. So I started off with the Gucci Dao civilian AR. So ran that drill. 0.73. Did it in 0.73 seconds. Okay, great. I uh, did that three times. Just hovered around 0.73 seconds. Moved over to the military M4. Military M4. Okay, ran it in 0.76 seconds. So there was very little difference between these two rifles when it came to that. Next drill that I ran was a simple barricade drill. So I worked off a cement barricade. So what this worked was moving the rifle around doing that type of stuff. Um, due to the setups, I figured that there would be a pretty big time difference. Um, so it was simply two from on the left, two on top, and then two bottom right. So, so, so there's a lot of movement, a lot of kneeling, that type of thing. It's easiest to see it. So we started with the military M4. So I did that in approximately 13.7, hovered right around there for my three runs. Next, I did it with the Gucci Dout civilian AR. I 
did that in about 11.93 seconds. It was slightly easier to maneuver this due to weight. Of course, the military M4 has a peck and all of that extra equipment. Also has that big broom handle sticking down, so it's a little bit more difficult to maneuver. So because of that, it was much easier to maneuver this gucci out civilian AR. The next drill that I ran was the 75 yard uh, two shot. So I simply started from a high ready and then on buzzer, I would bring my rifle to my shoulder and I'd take two shots at a seal target that was 75 yards away. So I started off with the Gucci Dap Civilian AR. Here we go. Okay, did that in about two seconds flat. I was pretty consistent with that. Next thing I did it with was the Military M4. I did that in about 2.75 seconds and that was pretty consistent. Finally, we moved to the collateral drill. The collateral drill is kind of my own little drill that I love to do. Um, it's from the movie Collateral. It's just two targets. You're approximately seven yards away from them. Uh, on buzzer, you do two to the chest on the first one, two to the chest on the second one, one to the head on the second one, and then immediately transition and do one to the head of the first one. So it's just a fun transition drill. It's based from the movie Collateral. It's cool. Tom Cruise is great. Um, he's really short, though. I didn't realize that until pretty recently. And that kind of haunted my dreams a little bit. But um, anyhow, collateral drill. So I started off with the military M4, ran that three times. Averaged out around 1.78 seconds. Then moved over to the Gucci Doubt AR. And ran that three times, did it in about 1.64 seconds. So, with all these drills, I was undoubtedly faster with the Gucci Doubt um, civilian AR. But I was really, really close um, for almost all the drill times with the military M4. Uh, they weren't a whole lot different. Now, I will say this it was a lot easier with the Gucci Doubt civilian. AR, and that was due to recoil impulse and ergonomics and that type of thing. So let's kind of delve into this. Let's delve into the difference between these two setups and why one felt a lot easier to do all these drills with versus kind of the old military M4. So first off, um, one of the big things is going to be gas system. So these two rifles are running different gas systems. The military M4 is running a carbine length gas system. Now, what's good about the carbine length gas system is that you have a crap ton of dwell time. So what is dwell time? Dwell time is the amount of time, basically, that you have uh, gas hitting the gas port and pushing back through the system and impinging upon the system and allowing it to recoil forcefully. So as long as that barrel's kind of plugging the end here, it's keeping all that gas behind it and it's keeping that gas pressure high. So carbine length gas systems are great, especially on a 16 length, on like a 14.5 or 14 or 16 because um, of all of that dwell time that you have. So very reliable. Now at the same time, you also have, uh, it's a little bit over gas. So because of that, you run into some problems such as a little bit more perceived recoil. And of course it's going to wear parts a little bit quicker than say something that was less over gassed. Now let's compare that to something like the mid-length gas system on the BCM. So mid-length gas systems are perhaps one of the best compromises that have been made. They don't have quite as much dwell time as the carbon length, but they still have more than enough to make sure that this system runs reliably. So with any type of good brass ammo that has that's loaded to NATO specs and all that type of thing, you're going to have more than enough gas to properly cycle the system. I haven't seen uh, a mid-length be any less reliable than a carbine length. So I understand the kind of concept behind the carbine length and why they run that in the military, but at the same time, uh, the mid-length is incredibly reliable and I've seen no detriment to it in a variety of conditions. So because of that, the felt recoil, this is one of the many reasons, the felt recoil from the BCM was significantly less because the gas system was very well balanced. So that allowed me to run the gun a little bit faster because I wasn't getting as much jump. And now I know, here we go. People are going to come in there and be like, wow, if you think the 5.56 five, jumps and recoils, I get it. All right, we get it, man. But if we can have a rifle that recoils less and is easier to keep on target, why wouldn't we? So let's not argue that point. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the gas system. Let's talk about the handguard. So the handguard on the M4 is non-free floated. What that means, it makes contacts with the front sight post, uh, which is attached to the barrel. This disallows the barrel 
from flexing as the slug is traveling down the barrel. Because of that, um, you have a little bit of decreased accuracy overall. Now, some people think that the difference between free floated and non free, flo free floated is like huge, and, and it's definitely there. There's no doubt that a free floated handguard is awesome, but uh, don't get out of control on this. So it is non free floated, and then obviously it's a little bit fatter than the BCM, and it's a lot shorter, right? So the handguard on the military M4 does not extend past the front sight post. So that leaves a lot of barrel exposed. It is light to start off with, but the problem comes into play when you start shooting off of barricades. So if I'm coming up to a window or a wall or something and I need to brace this rifle off of that in order to take a shot, uh, you don't want to rest the barricade on the barrel of the weapon, if at all possible. Uh, sometimes you have to, but when you rest the barrel on a barricade or something like that, it's going to push on the barrel and it's going to affect accuracy. It's going to deflect, uh, it's going to cause that round to not land where it should. So what's nice about having a extended handguard, such as a BCM, MCMR, uh, is that you have very little of that barrel exposed. So if I go to rest that barrel on a windowsill or a ledge or something like that, um, I'm not gonna be pressing on the barrel that allows me to get a little bit further back um, and not expose the barrel as much and that type of stuff. So it's pretty cool. Now, another great thing about having an extended handguard is the ability to reach my hand out further. And this is always the, uh, what people get really pissed about, <laughs> is uh, they're like, why do you reach your hand out so far? Uh, it basically allows me to control the rifle more. So all the bang is coming out the end of the barrel right there. So the closer I'm, I have my hand to the end of the bang right there, uh, the more I can kind of control it. I in a little bit more leverage on that, right? That's basic kind of mathematics and science. And I feel like I'm rehashing Magpul DVDs right now. Um, and so I'm not like a fan of like super like over anything like that, but getting my hand forward um, is nice. Allows me to control everything and also allows me to get an easier length of pull. So when you're holding an AR and you're bringing it to your shoulder, uh, you want a good length of pull. You don't want to be sucked in where you're having to like really pull everything out. You want to allow your kind of your natural bones and muscles to kind of allow that rifle to be pulled back into you. So with a hand grip further out, that allows me to not pull the stock quite as further out to get a good length of pull for myself. So right there feels perfect for me, about two clicks out. Now I know Frank Proctor is going to run in here and be like, you should do it all the way out. And I get it, Frank Proctor, you're an enormous man though. Uh, you're very tall, at least I think so. But length of pull matters. So on an M4, because the handguard is so short, getting out pretty far is not very far at all. So because of that, to get a good length of pull, I have to pop the stock all the way out on the M4. Now what that actually does is it overall makes the length of it just a tad longer than the civilian when I have that pulled out for the proper length of pull. So that is another reason that I like handguards that extend out a little bit further. Now, of course, there are other military M4s that have rails that go out and that are free floated and that type of thing. So this isn't to say that the military hasn't already figured this out, but I just want to point out in this particular military uh, styled M4 that it is a definite problem when it comes to length of pull. <clears throat> Okay, next thing is going to be barrel profile. So barrel profile is underneath that handguard that you have, uh, how much metal is taken off? You know, how thick is that barrel? And, and you know, is it thick all the way to the end or is it taper or what does it do? So on a lot of military imports, you have a SOCOM profile barrel, which um, works in certain applications like mounting, mounting in like an M203 or something like that, but might not be the most advantageous uh, to, a sh to a shooter. So, BCM uses like the enhanced lightweight profile and some certain other profiles use like the Hansen profile and that type of thing where it tapers down. Uh, the point is, is that barrels weigh a lot. They're, they encompass most of the weight out front of the rifle. So a good barrel profile that has a good balance of thickness of the barrel to pro tapering to ensure that it's not too heavy is going to be important. And that's where the civilian AR really kind of shines because they have a great barrel profile. And because of that, it's a little, it's a lighter weight out front that allows me to drive the rifle. Now, of course, a lighter weight barrel, it's not gonna be able to tolerate heat quite as much under extreme sustained firing, but um, that is kind of another topic for another day. So next is going to be lower receivers. So when it comes to lower receivers, there have been some really cool advancements made in lower receivers since the you know, uh, M16 was first conceived. So we have like the Radian ADAC lower, which allows you to lock the bolt back off the mag release. So when you're trying to clear my function, that's just one less step that you have. So it's these cool things like that that are innovative and kind of have pushed the platform further. Further, there are some really awesome triggers. Now, on this 
civilian rifle, I'm using a Geisy trigger. Geisy triggers are my favorite triggers, bar none, um, because they use full power springs. So there have been huge advances in triggers, and a good trigger can make all the difference when it comes to making long shots, close shots, that type of thing. So they are bounds and leaps superior to military mil-spec triggers and that type of thing. Now, you can get really good with mil-spec triggers. Look at guys like mil-spec mojo on Instagram. He almost exclusively runs mil-spec triggers, and the guy is a complete beast. So there's no doubt, but again, if I can have a product that makes it easier to shoot and can still function just as reliably, why wouldn't I take that advantage? So that's kind of my point here. Finally, charging handles. Um, there's no doubt that the Colt charging handle works, but for one-handed manipulation, um, the Radian is my personal favorite. I think that they are the best charging handles on the market. Uh, they're slick, they're easy to grab onto, they work really well. If you don't like the larger wings on the Radian Raptors, they have uh, the Radian uh, SLs, which are smaller. I call them the Small Raptor, S-M-O-L, but that is not their official name, but I'm trying to change it finally we have optics and mounts so in this case we weren't so much comparing mounts but when it comes to optics um, there are of course miniaturized optics that are just as reliable as the larger optics that were used so the aimpoint comp m4s is an excellent optic massive battery life it rocks i get it but then you have other optics that are miniaturized like the aimpoint t2 the aimpoint comp m5 that do just as well that have battery lives that are just as large and are just as reliable or more reliable and are smaller, way less, and that type of thing. And of course, military mounts are typically a little bit heavier. And now you have some really excellent mounts, like the ones from Scalar Works, that are just very well made, very lightweight, very robust. So there have been changes there. Um, between these two rifles, you notice that I'm running a fixed front sight post. So on the Gucci Doubt AR, I am running a Scalar Works front sight post. Um, I just like them as a reference point when I'm shooting fast and I'm looking through the optic, kind of helps me keep on target. Um, and of course, on the military M4, it has a fixed front sight post. The difference being between these two is that the front sight post here disallows the system from being uh, free floated, which can affect accuracy, like we talked about earlier, versus the civilian, where I have this mounted to the rail and it's still a free float handguard. So that's the difference between the two. But ultimately, yeah, the civilian. Gucci Doubt AR is a smoother recoil impulse, is easier to keep on target and all that kind of stuff. But even with all that, um, I still was pretty dang close on my times with the military M4. And that's because I trained. Training is what matters. Um, a really nice rifle is really nice, but if you're not shooting a lot of rounds, if you're not practicing, if you're not dry firing, if you're not actually getting in there and taking that time to really push yourself you know, you're not gonna be good. So if there's anything I hope that this video illustrates, it's that, yeah, it's definitely a superior rifle, you know, no doubt, superior. But if all you have is, you know, uh, a plain Jane M4 or even, you know, a less coochied out civilian AR, uh, go and practice. You know, the guys can, can go and brag online about how cool and coochied out their guns are, but if they're not shooting them, What's, what's the point? Um, you know, guns are cool, but if you own them, train with them. So that's my only point here, guys. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more of these types of comparisons uh, between rifles, especially when we start getting to higher-end rifles um, and even different types of rifles like AK versus AR, SCAR versus AR, SCAR versus AK, you know, Glock versus another Glock, <laughs> Glock imitator. So we're going to be doing way more of these. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and kind of the drills and then the thought process thought then the thought process behind it um we have a lot more coming so stay tuned be cool get training cogworks bear solutions esoteric haley strategic which is my debt which is a great company and i've got nothing else for you guys okay i do have one more thing for you guys wash your hands dear god wash your hands please Wash your hands. If there's uh, anything that's going to keep you alive longer, it's washing your hands. We can prevent, we can literally stop the cold, maybe, if we wash our hands. So please do it. And if you stayed here long enough, guys, you're going to hit another segment here. You're my ultra fans. And that is from Big Daddy Unlimited. Now, you've probably seen these um, advertisements all through, like, Coley Noir and other guys and that type of thing. And I, I get it. You probably heard it quite a bit. But... 
uh, when it comes to optics and other really cool things that you can buy, um, you're not going to find lower prices. And here's the thing. I understand that Big Daddy Unlimited is like a subscription service and, and all that kind of thing, but it doesn't really cost that much. And plus, you guys can cancel Netflix. First off, what has Netflix ever done for you? So get in there. Check out Big Daddy Unlimited. Um, if I need to buy optic, I typically go through them uh, because I find the lowest prices through them. Just straight up being honest with you guys. But... Um, yeah, obviously you can buy used and you can get cheaper sometimes, but for the most part, uh, you won't see optics quite as cheap. Uh, for a while, they had Trigicon RMRs at like an outrageous price, like super low. I can't even remember. I think it was like below 300. It was like insanity. So get in there if you're looking for optics and that type of stuff and check them out. They're a pretty cool little service there. And that is literally the end of the video. You have stuck to the very end. Therefore, you are my ultra fans. If you've gotten this far, comment with ultra fan. <laughs> I don't know. Do something. Love you guys. Take care.